Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be discussing about gparted and where it would be commonly used. So what is gparted? gparted, which stands for Gnome Partition Editor, which is a free partition editor so you can create, delete, move, resize, and copy your disk partitions and their file systems. So a common example is if your C drive is running low on space and you want to add additional space. So let's say it's 250 gigs and you're using up 245 gigs. So you bought a new 512 gig drive, imaged your old drive using Clonezilla, then restored it to your new 512 gig drive. But when you go to Windows Disk Management, you're not able to extend it. The option is grayed out. This is because of how versions of Windows 7 and up sets up the partitions on your system. So that is where Gparted would come into help. So I'm running Windows 10 and opening up Explorer here, going to this PC, and local disk C drive is 24.4 gigs, 4.54 gigs free. And I'm gonna open up disk management. And disk management comes up. And you can see here that I have 100 gigs free here and 24 gigs is my C drive here. And if I right click on it, the extend volume is grayed out. This is because the free space, the 100 gigabytes here is not contiguous. So it needs to be beside it, which it's not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use gparted to help with this. So I'm going to go and download gparted. gparted live download. Okay, gparted download. Go to download. And I'm going to download the ISO file, amd64.iso. Okay, and while that is downloading, I'm going to download Rufus. And Rufus will allow me to create a bootable USB drive with a gparted on it. There are other options like Ventoy, but I'm going to use Rufus for this video. Okay, it's finished downloading. Opening up the folder. Okay, I'm going to put in a USB drive. Okay, it's the E drive here. All right, I'm going to start Rufus. All right, and I'm going to put gparted onto the USB drive. So like gparted, partition sp scheme, MBR, target system, BIOS, sorry, UFI. Volume in gparted live and start. Write in ISO image mode recommended. And hit yes for this. And hit OK. Just going to fast forward through this. OK, it's completed. I'm going to close these windows here and boot from the USB drive. This is what you'll see, the GNOME partition editor here. And so we're gonna pick the first option. So it's gparted live, the default settings. I'm gonna hit enter. Okay, and it's asking here to key map, of course, the layout of symbols on the keyboard. So I'll just pick a don't touch key map, just hit enter. And then now it's asking you, which language do you prefer? And 33, that's a US English. So you can just keep the default. So you just hit enter. And here it's asking you about uh, entering the graphical environment. And it's going to, uh, if you choose zero, however, if graphical environment X Windows fails to start, you can uh, run pseudo force video to configure it. And so you can just uh, use the default, which is zero. So you could just hit enter and it'll continue to start X, which is the program to run the GUI. And it's using Debian for this.
Okay, it has started up by Gparted, and so I'm just going to go over through the different menu options here. So there's Gparted to refresh the devices on your system here, and then there's the devices, and this is my drive here, it's 126 gig drive, and then edit, so you can undo, clear, and apply your operations. The view, you can view your device information, pending operations, file system support, device, create partition table, attempt data rescue. Don't need to worry about this for this video here. And then there's partition, new, you don't need to worry about that. And then there's information, and then the help. So starting up from the partitions at the top, we have the EFI system partition, 100 megabytes, and it has the bootable flag on it. So this is where it boots from when your system starts up. This is second partition here. It's a Microsoft reserved partition, and then it's uh, 16 megabytes here. And this is our C drive here, the 24.45 gigabytes here. And then next is the NTFS. It's a hidden partition here. It's 522 megabytes. It's for recovery purposes. And then finally, we have the free space here, 100 gigabytes in size. Okay, so what needs to be done is we got to move the 522 megabyte Windows recovery partition down. And then so the free space, the 100 gigabytes will be moved up and it will be contiguous to the C drive partition here. And then to do that, we click on the recovery partition, the 522 megabytes. We right click on it, we're gonna resize slash move. And then here it's going to ask us the free space preceding it. So it's going to be all of it. So 103348. And then the partition stays the same size. And the free space will be zero. And then so we're going to align it to the cylinder. And then we're going to hit resize slash move. And then gives us a warning here. Moving a partition might cause your operating system to fail to boot. Uh, that's if you're moving the Windows system partition C. Uh, in this case, we're not moving the Windows partition C. So this does not apply to us. So we're going to hit OK. And we see here there's one operation pending. And it's going to move the partition. This is the Windows recovery partition to the right. So it's moving it to the bottom, and then the free space is now before the C drive, so it's going to be contiguous. And all we have to do now is we've got to hit the checkbox here. So this will apply all operations. So we're going to hit it. And it's asking us, are you sure you want to apply the pending operations? So apply, yes. And it's going to go through the motions. And you can hit details. And so here it'll show you what it's done. Afterwards, you can hit close. And then all we need to do is just reboot the system here and have it boot into Windows. So to do that, so you can click here at the X to close the window. And then we're going to go to exit. Double click. And it's asking us what we want to do. So we want to reboot it. So we're going to hit OK. So we're going to reboot it. And it's asking us to remove the live medium, close the tray, and press Enter to continue. So I'm going to remove it. And I'm going to hit Enter. When Windows boots, it will likely have to do a disk check. This is because of the changes we made, which is normal. So let it do the disk check and do not skip it. Okay, it has booted into Windows. Okay, I'm going to log in. Okay, and it's booted in. Now I'm going to go to Start, and I'm going to go into Disk Management again. Okay, Disk Management is loaded up. And here we have the 100 gigabytes. It's now contiguous. It's now next to the C drive. And at the end, we have the recovery partition, 122 megabytes that we had moved. So if we open up Explorer here, and we go to this PC. And so the local disk, there's 24.4 gigabytes. So what we're going to do, right click, and we're going to extend volume. We're going to hit next. 
and it's going to say you can only extend the volume to the available space shown below because your disk cannot be converted to dynamic or the volume being extended is a boot or system volume. So available and selected. So this is all the free space, 103347 megabytes. And so the total volume will now be 128383. So we're going to hit next. And then we're going to hit finish. So we see the C drive now is 125.37 gigabytes. And we go back to Explorer. We refresh, we're going to hit F5. And we now see it's 125 gigabytes in total size. We have 104 gigabytes free. So this is how you would use Gparted to extend your disk. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye now.